you've been learning about value investing, finance, just regular investment for a while now, but you don't know where to go next. You're getting confused about the vast amount of information on the internet. You don't want to waste your time on crap information. You want good information um, and reliable information. In this series of videos on value investing and finance education, you will find those answers to those questions and much more. My name is Jason Rivera. Welcome to Value Investing and Finance Education. In today's video, we're going to talk about why hotels are massive trouble. Before I get to that, though, I need to let you know that this series is available as a podcast and anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms, Stitcher, Anchor, Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, and more. You can get this as part of the I Love Value Investing podcast anywhere in the world for free and on the go. Okay, so in the last couple of weeks, I told you why banks are in massive trouble, why the housing market is in massive trouble, why commercial real estate is in massive trouble, and why the car industry is in massive trouble. All related to unemployment, coronavirus related issues, bankruptcies, people not paying their bills. Um, all this kind of stuff. Today, I'm going to tell you why hotels are also in massive trouble. Uh, this, again, if you want to watch the other videos where I provide some more context to how this affects everything, all the way from the individual hotels to the employees, to people staying at the hotels, to the entire travel industry, to even the entire banking system and the entire economy. For context to those, or for more context to those, the links below to those other videos will be below this. Today I'm going to talk specifically about hotels though. So hotels are in massive trouble, like the other ones I mentioned, because of the lack of people traveling right now due to the coronavirus and also due to the mass unemployment related to coronavirus. As of this writing, I'm reading notes from my other screen here. Hotels have an 11.5% delinquency rate, which is up from 2% in May. That means for every 100 loans that a hotel operator has, 11, because you can't have a half a hotel, 11 of them are in default. To give you some context to that, retail operators who are also in massive trouble, 7.9% 7 delinquency rate, office buildings, which again we've already talked about, 1.9% delinquency rate, multifamily, that's like apartments, um, mobile home parks, stuff like that, a 0.6% delinquency rate. Hotels are almost at 12%. This is horrific. Um, frankly, for all hotel operators, all hotel owners, uh, banks, commercial institutions that are giving these loans, why? So let's take you through the whole process like I've done for every single one of these videos. So people are traveling with us because of the coronavirus fears and because they have less money because of mass unemployment. That means that during, typically in the US, summer travel season is when people travel a lot with their kids. They go on vacations uh, and they either drive or fly places quite a bit while kids are out of school, all that kind of stuff. Because people aren't traveling right now as much, they're not needing hotels to stay up. That means hotel occupancy rates are extremely low. I've seen best case scenarios where hotels are at 60% occupied on a kind of semi-regular basis. Most from my research that I've seen are occupied at about 40%. It's not good. That means 60% of their rooms are empty on a consistent basis. This is horrific in and of itself because hotels make a good chunk of their money off of the, off of the um, people, the room rates, the nightly room rates, whatever those are. 
but they also make money from people buying stuff in the hotel, restaurants in the hotel. This is where they make most of their profits off this kind of other stuff. But because people aren't going to hotels, they're not only not getting the room rate, but people are also aren't buying the stuff where they're profitable at. The extra stuff, the goodies in the hotel, the snacks and the drinks and stuff like that. Um, restaurant fee or restaurant uh, dinners, conventions, events, all that kind of stuff. Most of this has pretty much either completely stopped or is down a lot for the time being and probably for a while um, with coronavirus cases still just exploding in the U.S. and the entire world. So that's the first kind of level. This is horrific for hotels, which means problems with their staff and employees, but it also means goes to the next level. So what this means, because hotels are not making as much revenue, they're either more unprofitable or they are making net negative money or uh, negative unprofitability and cash flows due to their ongoing loan expenses and fixed costs and with their employees and keep them on the, up on the grounds of the hotel, maintenance, stuff like that. These costs don't go away just because people aren't coming to the hotel. So the loans go to the next part, which affects the banks that give these loans. Again, if you want more context into this, I'm not going to get too deep into this today, but more context into this, watch the previous videos and I go where I go through this entire cycle of how this affects everything that we're dealing with right now. So if people aren't coming because they don't have bills or because they can't pay their bills due to unemployment and coronavirus fears, they're not going to hotels. That means hotels aren't making money, which means hotels can't pay their loans, which affects the banks. If hotels continue doing this, they're going to have massive issues. Why? Not just because of the lower revenue, lower profits, unprofitability, lower cash flow, uh, negative free cash flow. Because they are, in general, at least the public stocks, I don't know about the private ones, obviously, but in general, the public stocks, hotel stocks, are massively over indebted. Massively. So this, if this continues for a while, and again, it probably will because... <laughs> The summer season, travel season in the U.S. is almost over already. Coronavirus is still here and still exploding. Kids are getting ready to go back to school if they're going back to school and in-person school, which means people will be even traveling less in the fall. With hotels not paying their bills to the banks, banks have more issues. Again, for context to that, go to the previous video or to the previous videos linked below. To put this into context, there are an estimated, again, sorry, I'm reading from my notes here, $7.7 .7 billion in hotel loans that are already 30 days delinquent as of July 6th, so more than a month ago. This is... Yeah, frankly, again, horrific. I don't know another word to explain how bad this is um, for hotels. Actually, no, that's for, okay, sorry, I was reading for, scanning through my notes here. Um, that was for something else. So this, again, will not be solved anytime soon. So what could this lead to for banks or for hotels? Let's start there. More layoffs, more bankruptcies, which are bad enough in, in and of itself. But it also could lead to defaults on their loans, again, which goes to the bankruptcy part, which would begin to affect the entire economy. The more, the fewer the less money banks get, the less money they have to loan out to somebody else in the form of home loans or business loans or 
acquisition loans or whatever the case may be. If banks don't have money, this entire kind of system comes to a stop. And there are multiple industries that are getting crushed right now. That, and they all negatively affect, frankly, the banking and the industry and the entire economy. This, again, I don't see this being fixed anytime soon. We talked last week about the car industry. That could pick up once people start getting hired. Relatively quickly, in my opinion. Hotels? Frankly, I don't know. Because that is, quote unquote, discretionary spending. You don't need to go on a vacation. You don't need to stay in a hotel. Yes, it's nice. Especially after being cooped up in the house for how many, how many ever months we're going to end up being cooped up in the house. But you don't need that. It's called discretionary spending. Cars are pretty much necessary for most people, unless you work from home, which again, will affect the car industry. But you don't need to stay in a hotel. This was already seen in the last few years with Airbnb. Airbnb has already taken a huge chunk, or I don't know, a huge chunk, a, at least a chunk of revenue, profit, cash flow from hotels because of its vast network of properties. As of the last time I looked, I don't remember the exact number of properties Airbnb had under their kind of protection or network is probably a better way to put it. But they had more properties signed up for their service than there are hotel rooms on the entire earth combined. So that was already taking a huge chunk from hotels operations. This virus and this mass unemployment and this fear is taking uh, an even bigger chunk. And again, hotels are not necessary like cars are. So I don't know how fast this will pick up. It could be faster than I expect because again, after being cooped up in the house for months, you might just <laughs> need to take a vacation. Um, but will people be able to, I don't know. So it could go either way in my opinion in the hotels, but this is not good. Um, this again, like everything else I've talked about in this, this series where I talk about industries that are in massive trouble is not good. Is this a time to invest in this industry? I get this question every time about cars, about other uh, banks, about apartment buildings, stuff like that. At this point in time, like those other ones, I wouldn't invest in the hotels right now either because we don't know how long this is going to last. Is this going to last another three months? Is it going to last another nine months, two years? We have no idea. Um, so until there's more certainty, I would wait to invest in this arena because I foresee a bunch of bankruptcies in this arena. And I think it will be hard to pick who is and who is not going to go bankrupt because when you have essentially or very low, uh, very much lower revenue, profits, and cash flow, even if you only have a little bit of debt, that can cause issues. Um, of course, the companies with more debt will have bigger problems faster, um, but they also could either issue shares or issue more debt if they can get that to kind of keep things going slowly. Um, so bigger companies have more options to do. There's pros, pros and cons of both. And frankly, I wouldn't, do I think I could do a good job of picking them? Frankly, I don't think so. Um, because again, there's pros and cons to both sides being bigger with um, more debt, just because you're bigger, you have more options or being smaller with lower debt, but you don't have as many options if you do need the financing. So I don't think I could pick at a very good or a very high probability or at a high enough probability that would make me feel safe to invest in this arena. Again, Warren Buffett always says to buy when there's blood in the streets and there's blood in the streets in all these industries I've talked about, but there's also an enormous amount of uncertainty. Um, if there was a vaccine that came out tomorrow, there would be massive value in a lot of these industries. Um, but until that case comes out, if it ever comes out, I, I would need more certainty to invest in any of these arenas I've talked about and we'll talk about um, just because again, there's too much risk, too much uncertainty, too much specifically too much in 
terms of how long this is going to last. Again, if it was going to last about three months, that would be better. Six months, eh, nine months, okay. This is going to last two years. I don't know how many of these companies can stay out of bankruptcy, frankly. So I hope this helps. Hope you learned um, a lot. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know in the comments below. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. And we're releasing new videos all the time. If you're listening on the podcast, again, like, love, share, subscribe, download, and we'd really appreciate if you left a review because the more reviews, views, and listens we get on our content, the more people we can help like you with this. If you want more information about one of our best programs, our Value Investing Masterclass to learn how to value, evaluate, and um, or to find value and evaluate stocks faster using my process that I've developed over the last 13 years. You can find information about that masterclass below this. Um, and until next time, have a great day. Talk soon.